Hey there, movie buffs. Today, we're diving into the 1964 flick, The Fall of the Roman Empire. This historical epic takes us back to ancient Rome, where power struggles, betrayal, and epic battles shaped the destiny of an empire. But hold on to your seats because there's a lot more to this movie than meets the eye. As the story unfolds, you'll be treated to a roller coaster of emotions from moments that'll have you laughing out loud to shocking twists that'll leave you on the edge of your seat. But don't forget the tissues because there are some truly heart-wrenching scenes too. Now, why is this movie still talked about decades later? What makes it stand the test of time? We'll explore that and more as we delve deeper into this cinematic gem. And hey, if you've got any cherished memories or personal experiences related to the fall of the Roman Empire, we'd love to hear them. Share your stories in the comments below. So, grab your popcorn and buckle up for a journey through ancient history filled with drama, action, and everything in between. Trust us, you won't want to miss a minute of it. Released in 1964, the movie left a lasting mark on popular culture. Reviews at the time were mixed, with some praising its grand production while others criticized its historical accuracy. Despite the varied opinions, it became a notable part of cinematic history. The movie's influence reached beyond the screen, inspiring spin-offs in the form of novels and impacting subsequent historical epics. Fans embraced merchandise like posters and collectibles contributing to the movie's lasting popularity. Adaptations and references to the film continued over the years. Its themes of power, betrayal, and the decline of empires resonated with audiences, ensuring its place in cultural discussions. This ongoing fascination with Roman history and the epic genre highlights the movie's significance. In conclusion, while the film faced mixed reviews in its time, its impact on popular culture is undeniable. Spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations have solidified its place in cinematic storytelling history. The 1964 movie, The Fall of the Roman Empire, underwent British Board of Film Censor scrutiny, receiving a use certificate on December 12, 1963. While Paramount handled its distribution, Rank took charge in the UK. The film premiered at Asteria at Charing Cross Road on March 24, 1964, attended by the Duke of Edinburgh, supporting the King George's Fund for Sailors. It enjoyed a successful 62-week run, concluding on June 2, 1965, followed by Rank releasing a 35 mem print at regular prices. James Mason, a key figure in the film, secured exemption from World War II military service through non-combatant work refusal, a decision later rendered moot by a general exemption for film work. Alec Guinness, another notable actor in the movie, revealed in blessings in disguise harboring deep-seated animosity towards his violent stepfather. The two never harmonized, with Guinness fleeing at the mere sight of him. The Duke of Edinburgh's attendance at the premiere, Mason's wartime exemption, and Guinness's tumultuous relationship with his stepfather add intriguing dimensions to the narrative of the fall of the Roman Empire. In the world of movies, there are often interesting connections between famous actors. For example, Sophia Loren's son, Edoardo Pani, dated Chiara Mastroini, whose father, Marcello Mastroini, worked closely with Loren. Sophia Loren won an Oscar for acting in a foreign language film, just like Marion Cotillard, Robert De Niro, Roberto Benigni, and Benicio Del Toro. Alec Guinness, another famous actor, didn't like sequels and didn't believe in making them. These connections and beliefs influence both the stories told on screen and the personal lives of actors. Each person's experiences add something unique to the world of movies. In the 1964 movie, The Fall of the Roman Empire, James Mason, along with his wife Pamela, faced legal disputes upon arriving in the U.S. in November 1946. He fought a legal battle against David E. Rose over a production company agreement, eventually winning after 18 months. Sophia Loren, renowned for her roles, often portrayed the love interest of older characters. Notably, in films like It Started in Naples, she starred opposite Clark Gable, who was significantly older than her at 59, while she was 25. Lauren's talent earned her the 21st spot on the American Film Institute's 50 Greatest Screen Legends list. Amidst the backdrop of World War II, Alec Guinness, through his service with the Royal Navy, aided Yugoslav partisans by delivering essential supplies. Meanwhile, Stephen Boyd, initially considered for the role of James Bond in the early 1960s, showcased his versatility long before his involvement in the fall of the Roman Empire. Later, in the realm of sci-fi, George Lucas commended Guinness's mentorship on the set of Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope, citing his influence in fostering a serious work ethic among the cast. Such anecdotes shed light on the diverse experiences and talents of the individuals involved in the production of the film. 
Alec Guinness was a member of the Old Vic group organized by John Gielgud in the early 1930s, which also included, among others, Jack Hawkins, Anthony Keel, and Peggy Ashcroft. Sophia Loren, a huge fan of soccer club SSC. Napoli once jokingly said she would do a striptease if the team achieved promotion to Soraya when they did, she clarified it was just a joke. Christopher Plummer spoke English and French fluently due to his bilingual upbringing in Senville, Quebec. This was where he passed his summers and lived for the rest of the year in downtown Montreal. In the fall of the Roman Empire, Anthony Keel, known for his roles in acclaimed films like Hamlet and Lawrence of Arabia, brought his military experience to the screen, having served as a major in the British Army during WW2 and later portraying a major in the Guns of Navarone. Alec Guinness, renowned for his stage work, notably starred in the first ever showing of an Inspector Calls alongside Sir Ralph Richardson in 1946. In 1964, The Fall of the Roman Empire featured a cast that included Alec Guinness, Christopher Plummer, and James Mason. Guinness acclaimed for his performance as the Fool in King Lear opposite Lawrence Olivier in 1946, went on to receive accolades throughout his career, as did Olivier despite initial criticisms of his youth in classical roles. Christopher Plummer and James Mason reunited in Jesus of Nazareth in 1977. The movie marked the beginning of a collaboration between producer Samuel Bronston and screenwriter Philip Jordan, leading to two subsequent films about the Boxer Rebellion and an unrealized project on the French Revolution. In recent years, a Canadian stamp featuring a well-known actor has gained attention since its release in October 2021. The actor played a significant role in the stamp's creation, even giving the nod to its design. This stamp, priced at CAN 95 cents each, is now available in booklets and panes for collectors. Another accomplished actor, alongside a renowned director, collaborated on several films. Their partnership led to the creation of notable movies such as The Deadly Affair, The Seagull, Child's Play, and The Verdict. In an interesting twist, the mother of an iconic actress once won a Greta Garbo lookalike contest hosted by Metro Goldwyn Mayer in 1932. However, she deferred her Hollywood dreams at that time due to her age, eventually giving birth to the future star who would go on to make a significant impact in the entertainment industry. And so, these fascinating stories connect various individuals across time and space, shaping the rich tapestry of the entertainment world. In the 1964 movie, The Fall of the Roman Empire, Alec Guinness, known for his role as Marcus Aurelius, has a notable family connection. His great-grandson is Nesta Guinness Walker, a professional footballer. During the play Wise Child by Simon Gray, there was controversy surrounding Guinness's appearance in drag, leading some audience members to leave in protest. Sophia Loren, who portrayed Lucilla in the film, received a significant sum of $1,000 for her performance. Adjusted for inflation, this would amount to nine six hundred fifty six hundred forty five sixteen dollars in 2023. These facts shed light on some interesting aspects of the movie and the people involved. 